What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and we got a very special guest for you guys. As you can see, it is legit. Now, this artist has, I mean, he released a project pretty recently and already has over a million streams on it across platforms. That should be enough for you to listen alone. Um, but he's, he's been grinding. It's not like he was just here, but he's been able to do it in a relatively sh uh, short period of time at the same time. So I would... Uh, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm just going to let you guys hear the gems that he drops from his experience as we get rolling. So, first of all, first and foremost, legit, what's up? My brother, pleasure, pleasure to be here, man. Salute to the platform. Salute to everything you're doing, man. Thank you for recognizing me, you know, working, you know, and, and we can hopefully help some people continue their growth. For sure, for sure, man. Glad to have you on, man. So, let's, before we get into some of the numbers and some of those specific tactics and just the way you see things, Kind of tell everybody a little bit about your background, right? You're from Florida, right? Yeah, I'm from Florida, Central Florida area, right in between Tampa and Orlando, uh, a small city. So, I'm, you know, those are the biggest cities next to me. Um, I've been doing music for 10 years, like since 2000. I graduated high school 2010. So um, I was doing music before I graduated, but literally full time, like, you know, art, as an artist out here working, working a full time job then being a full time artist. And then quitting my job and becoming a full time artist and taking that, you know, that, that sacrifice and that risk. Mm. Um, I've been working um, with a couple artists, a couple record labels, you know, trying to get in the right, uh, you know, the right rooms and brush the right shoulders. But um, right. really just working it and growing, bro, every day, maintaining and then gaining, you know, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Bet. So, what would you, how you describe your style, by the way? Uh, I feel like music is emotion. You feel me? So, when I, when okay. I, when people ask me that question, I kind of I kind of like to give this answer. I say the songs for everything. So my style is um more so directed toward the ladies right now. Like that's that's what I figure out is working best for me. But um you know I have songs about you know about I have a song called Lost and Lonely about you know a suicidal thought um, type situation. I have different different songs for different emotions. Um it kind of kind of fills in the gap like that for me really. But I got you I mean, and that's perfect man cuz really when we think about genres and and certain sounds today a lot of mm -hmm. things are shifting, especially from, because of playlists, to um to being defined by mute moves in the first place. Come on, the play, the, the just the, even the way they name the playlist is like you know going to the gym. Like what you listen to at the gym is not what you're gonna listen to when you and your lady trying to you know be in the room together. So right, that right, kind of right. stuff, like just 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 um music is emotion, and when the words can't you know say it, the, the music speaks. <laughs> That's real. Sure. It sound like you make music for the ladies saying shit like oh, that. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, man. So all right. Tell me, you were just telling me um, you know, a minute ago that Spotify, you you boosted up about 17k um listeners on Spotify over the last well, since January. So I guess it's about over the last month. But uh -huh. you talked about how you wanted more on Spotify. You have like 1.2 million on Apple, but why like why, how come that Apple uh, Spotify right. situation didn't work how, how it did? Um, well, what, in the beginning, what I did is when I dropped the project, um, I kind of, uh, for one or two reasons. So one reason was I kind of, if I, if I kind of split up all my traffic, I, I it would be harder to get a reading of the impact of the project. So when I first dropped the project, I sent everybody to Apple Music. Like, go to Apple Music. I'm promoting it. I'm sending out the links. Um, the link in my bio, of course. People are clicking on it. So Apple Music got a head start. Um, and then um, what happened is um, Spotify, they rolled out Spotify for artists. And I'm like, okay, I can, I can really like, uh, you know, interact with this, with this platform and I can really try to like get my numbers up on it. So what yeah. um, Spotify for artists has done is they've let me like um, basically claim my profile as an artist and I can take my profile and I can edit it. Like I can put like little words, like I can put like daily, daily little uh, posts and stuff, uh, like updates on, on my page. I can put like what my favorite, like what uh, the, the uh, artist choice, like I can put a song that I want them to listen to first. So just different things like that. And it's really like 17,000 people since January have listened and, you know, and, and it's just gaining more and more. Um, the traffic goes on. Yeah. And then you, and then you talked about too, that uh, you're not having your smart URL to let people choose. Brother, that that's yeah. very, very smart. So I don't know if, uh, I know you know, of course, about the smart URL, but, um, as an artist, I feel like it gives us that 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 um, that that creativity to where they can we can put it out wherever we want, and then the people can go find it on what they follow, what they yeah. use. 
So like when I, I I'm I'm in um in the midst of actually getting a smart URL for the for the wet tape right now because I'm still actually just pushing the Apple Music. But smart URLs are are some of the best things going for for being able to reach everybody on all the other platforms that they choose. Okay, and, and bet, like well, let's rewind real quick too because you know you you doing some pretty serious numbers right now um in Thank a short you, time. How did you get there with this particular project? Okay, um. Man, so it's kind of like it's kind of like that consistency and being persistent thing. So um, I actually got my following more on social media from um, figuring out what worked for me. Cause like I was like, you know, I was going through. I, me and my 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 brother Rob, who's my manager, working with me. Um, we were, we even tried a, a little scheme. We tried to give away two hundred dollars, bro. Like, and no one would take the money. Like I, I had a song. I had a song called "I'm Up," and um, I'm like I, the, the the little promo I was gonna run for it was. My song is I'm up. Uh, I want you to be up with me, man. Uh, make a video listening to my song, and whoever get the most uh, likes and views, I I give you two hundred dollars. Bro, nobody re did my repost, did nothing. I'm like I'm trying to give away money, and nobody, and you know, and I'm not getting that 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 back and forth. I'm not getting that interaction that I want. Yes. So I just I, I had to get back to really like what people like want to see from me. So I started doing freestyle videos, and. One video let like and it's crazy because we'll spend a, a, a like we'll spend money a budget have real cameras real like models every cars whatever in a real music video and they get sixty seventy thousand views and then I do a video in the parking lot and it gets five million views for me rapping over a beat like freestyling so I did that and I, once I seen the first one kind of catch the traction I said man let me do some more and I just kept doing more and I just even to today like I'll jump on a challenge and and put it out there just to see you know what what it could go because literally it. Facebook was my biggest plat is, is my biggest platform, and then it trickles over to Instagram from there. So it kind of, yeah, go ahead, brother. No, I was gonna say like tell me tell me about that. How does that work for you? Because you have well probably like 137k or something like that on Instagram. I got one. I got I'm at 117 right now. 117. Um, right, 117. And then um the way the way Facebook works is it, I like all the like that's what I really go viral like on Instagram I might get 30 40,000 views on the actual video clip yeah but when, when I share it to my Facebook page which my, I have an artist page on Facebook I share mm -hmm. it to that page and that and that I have I think um, a quarter of a million likes or uh, the way they do it is likes and follows yeah so I uh, likes the likes is like 190 and then the um the followers is like a quarter of a million so that that really helped me take take one platform and then kind of use the other one to like to, to build it up as well so like that's that kind of got me to there and then i was able to have an audience and then interact with the audience and that's one thing that i, I kind of pride myself in is talking to my fans and me being a one-on-one -on -one person with my fans to where if you slide in my dm and i see it i'm gonna reply back to you you know what i'm saying um and instagram instagram has helped me um tremendously because instagram has uh short replies to where if somebody like if a girl's like you, you go through a dm and you'll see hard eyes hard eyes hard eyes i love your music i love your music hard eyes hard eyes oh your music's dope where's your music at so I, i'm able to like do short replies with instagram having my page as a business account as an artist page i can i can just go to my dm and just boom 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 reply to these people with two clicks and it's really just like and this, they're getting they're getting what they want and you know it's keeping me moving throughout my day so but it's that, explain the short yeah, replies yeah the short what? replies help me so much in, in the dm and talking to the fans now i'm saying tell people what that is oh excuse me so short replies are this so basically um sorry about that you good yeah you got my bad sorry about that so short replies basically are um a, a help or excuse me uh, kind of like a helping hand in the dm um when people dm you every day and you know it gets overwhelming and people want to hold conversations so the hardest thing to do is to, to stay to stay responsive to these people so the short replies help me to where i can literally take a generic reply to people that send me the same stuff all the time so i have a reply that says thank you so much for supporting my music i appreciate you uh you know that kind of uh, just a, an appreciative reply for when people say i love your song or i love your music that yeah. way you know it's and it's really it's not that the the reply is you know not um, from the heart or nothing like that but it just it gives you that quick reply to where you don't have to sit there and type everything out and it yeah. gets the interaction up no nah, that's real i feel you save time man yeah How you just, handful. what what made y'all even focus on facebook because i hear so many artists that like no matter how much i might speak i personally might even, even speak positively on facebook i mm -hmm. always hear artists that be like nah like not facebook like it's trash uh, 
Facebook, I think it's because Facebook isn't trendy anymore. Facebook is the main site now. Your grandmother is probably on Facebook. My grandmother's on Facebook. So Facebook yeah, yeah. is not the quote unquote, I, I believe, trendy social social network. Um, you know, Snapchat and Instagram are more so youthful, I feel. And and music is a youthful thing. So when you're doing stuff like that, to be current and on the edge, I feel like they believe Instagram and um and, and Snapchat are really big. But Facebook has think about it. Facebook has everybody there. If you look at lakes with fish in them, there's way more fish in the Facebook lake than there is in the Instagram and Snapchat lake. So if you're throwing out your line and trying to catch some fish, you know, it's, it's easier to get to, to catch people on Facebook to me. And also they got the share button on, on, on Instagram with videos. And, you know, when you post stuff, they literally have to steal it from your page and repost it to their page. Unless it's, you know, the story or something like that that helps you out. But on Facebook, that share button is big. Yeah. You know, that share to your share to my page or share to a friend, share to a message, that share button is really big. And that that right there alone has given me the ability to go viral from a regular post that on Instagram wasn't able to go viral. You know, man, like from that standpoint, honestly, it's like base, Facebook has more natural organic growth because of the share button versus Instagram, which at this point, it's all pretty much you posting your own stuff. And you got to get it posted a whole bunch of places. And maybe you get to a point where people see it so much, now they get interested in you, but you're really paying for all your reposts for the most part. True story. Yeah. And then, here. Right. And then we, I, also we get a little bit deeper. The algorithm for Instagram is set up against us. You know what I'm saying? They want us to pay for that, for that promo. You know what I'm saying? Instead of us, like I have 117,000 followers. I know for a fact, bro, when I post a picture, I'm not in front of 117,000 people. You know, um, you know, some people are not on their phones. Some people are, are scrolling. I'm not, you know, yeah. and it's that algorithm that really puts you like in the people's face, like Instagram, that first, whatever, 30, 50 uh, minute, the whatever that reaction time. And they feel like it's, it's an important photo. Then they throw you in the algorithm. True. But like, I mean, you know, you hear that about Facebook as well, though, like when you got a, okay. a feed. So you guys, but you, but you don't, you don't advertise on, on Facebook at this point. You just have your followers and you post and it and it keep and it starts moving at this point. Is that how you got it? Or do you um, still promote? It's, it's a little it's a little bit of both. On um, certain certain promotions and like on a post we'll we'll put some um, paid promotion behind it and sponsor it. Then other times it's really organic. Um but literally every freestyle video that I've had, it's been an organic video that's went viral. Like every post that I've promoted, it's, I've never had a viral um situation happen from a paid promotion. Damn. Okay. Just to be honest, like, just to be honest, like we spent, you know, and we'll spend like, you know, when I released the project, we spent maybe, you know, just to, just to fill the waters, spend a hundred dollars here and see, you know, cause you know, you can set up the filter, you know, to where you want it to hit the people. So you kind of try, you, you, I didn't want to spend too much money on that one filter. I kind of mm -hmm. wanted to see what was the best filter for, for me. So mm -hmm. we, you know, spent like a hundred bucks on the filter and then seeing the, the, I guess the turnaround from it. So, but I've never been viral without, um, like, just organically i don't i don't unless you really i mean maybe these people pay pay a lot of money and give themselves a big head start but <laughs> i've never spent more than a hundred bucks at one time um promoting on facebook yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a lot it's more than a hundred bucks for sure <laughs> for sure brother for sure for sure <laughs> for sure for sure but um hey hold on well, let's talk about wet bro because we haven't talked about okay. what your project been Ooh. moving like what's the inspiration for that song the ladies are the inspiration for wet, my friend. Um, and just to get just to get a little more insight on wet, um, the wet and wet tape, because the project is called wet tape. Um, the project is strictly for the ladies. Um, we did a no guy campaign, a no a no. Uh, we I mean I don't know if I can cuss on here, but we said a no oh, dick yeah. campaign. You, feel <laughs> me? Uh, you don't got to put it. You can edit that out. No dick campaign for the wet tape. But wet stands for women's erotic testimonies, and um. So that it's an acronym, it's an acronym, and we kind of did a little deeper. And in the project, we we kind of throw in some poetry. And one of my uh, good friends is a Punani poet, an erotic poem, a poet does poetry. I've heard that before. Is that like that's a real thing, a Punani poet. Punani poet, where they yeah, like erotic poetry is big these days, man. Like oh. the, all the open mic nights, they're doing it everywhere. Man. Erotic I just poetry. Talk to it. So I, I it, grabbed man. I grabbed her, and she. Did, so it's, it has some erotic poetry on it. Um, some good, I would say it's it's an R and B vibe, or, or, excuse me, an R and B vibe, but it's not not too much to where you know you can't like listen to it when you vibe and moving around. You don't have to listen to it just with your girl, kind of deal. But so, so good. yeah, man, man, I, I love that, man. I love the whole, I love the whole concept, especially like to the point where 
you know, for me, branding is people always talk about who are we targeting, but branding is not, it's not just what you're doing is just as much what you're not doing. And y'all mm. basically did that when y'all right. talking about no dicks, right? Like you're telling them like, this ain't for you, bro. Like, yeah, exactly. Doing, you know, you and get people, the ladies. Most, most people like, think, they, they think about it the wrong way. You're like, oh, well you're cutting out half of your market when you don't sell to men. You don't understand what women want, men will want as well, I promise. Exactly. So <laughs> it's that target. But like, I had to learn that because bro, I put out other projects mm -hmm. and I have not had the same success because mm -hmm. I put out a project and this is what I would do. I put some club songs on there. I put some uh, some street songs in, on there, right? Some quote unquote street songs. I put some lady songs on there. And I try to just please everyone. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work because I, I'm, I'm literally like, I don't have a big enough budget to please everyone yet, for one, when I'm promoting my project, because yeah. I can't be in this everyone's face at one time. So yeah. I'm literally shooting in the dark at all these targets. I'm, I want to hit a target, but I don't know which one. So mm -hmm. finally, we put the light on the target. I'm like, these ladies, it's, I'm coming for these ladies, man. And we just put the whole, pro even to where the cover, the cover of the photo is me, it, me in the shower with my ex-girlfriend. And like, it's a real, like the cover is me in a real photo type deal. So we, we, we really like the, vi I haven't shot any visuals for it yet. So yeah. that's how I know the power of the project is like, is working for me. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm able to eat off streams now. That's the other projects. I've never seen any residuals from the streams. Like, it's really just, great, it's yeah. just really that target is really is what's is what's feeding my whole campaign right now. All right, so just just from that alone, there's some stuff that people could pull from it. But I want right. to, but what, what you directly? How do you feel like people should move based on what you learn in that process? Like if you had to like tell old you, like what, okay, the old the old me, I would tell him is stop trying to please everyone and find that find that that um I would say that consumer or see the thing is I had to figure out old me. This is what I would tell the old me. Your fans are not your friends. They're your customers. That's what I would tell the old me. Your friend, your, because I would treat fans like friends. And I'm like, yeah, man, I got these t-shirts, man. You got to get these. I, I got a good heart. I want to give you free shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to give everybody free stuff. But mm -hmm. I had to figure it out. Like, listen, these people will support me. And not only support me, but they could take, like, enough people supporting, you know, the same thing could elevate me to the level where I want to be. So I, tr I started to, to, to brand myself and market myself as, as you know, you want to buy me type stuff, you know, like what, like what I'm doing right now is worth it. I, I had to add value to myself. So I'll tell the old Lee, add value to yourself and your fans are not your friends. They're your customers. That's what I would tell my host. <laughs> Damn, bro. I, I feel like that would help myself. You know what I mean? Cause I, like I, get, I was caught up in it. Yeah. How do you, you said you added value to yourself. Like how did you, how did you do that? I added value to myself. First of all, it, it, first of all, it had to be a mindset. I had to look at myself in the mirror and know that like what, of these other humans are doing i can do you know what i'm saying like it's just the it's just the people around them and the team around so i started i added value to myself I, I built myself a team instead of it just being me you met my guy rob instead of it just being me and my guy rob now i have a social media manager now i have a booking manager now i have an operations operations manager now i have a, um, a business manager you know and i make myself you know a legitimate business or llc um so like i added value to myself in that light to where if I'm coming to somebody, I want to be as fish, official as I can. You know, it's, uh, I want my resume to be undeniable when I when I actually come to try to do business with anybody, whether it be, yeah. you know, I'm trying to get your give me t free T-shirts or something, you know. And even if you don't, uh, you don't pay me to wear your clothes, give me a promotional code to wear. You know, what I'm saying I could take that promotional code and show you my value then, so we can do future business. Just like different things to where I was like, this is what I was doing, and I had to be honest with myself, look in the mirror, like, bro. This is what you've been doing, and this is where you've been failing. So, that that kind of not the not to ramble on too much, but that nah, beats my mindset. I think that's real, bro, and I think everybody should do what you did. And I'm and I'm, I'm not saying that from a standpoint of like, oh, all y'all artists need to do that, or whoever's watching need to do that. I, I'll say that because like I had to go do that myself at certain points. You know what I mean? Right. And I have to like revisit that self reflection. You know, it should be more often probably, but I, I've had, sometimes I remember to do it. Sometimes, you know, you kind of get, you fall on your ass a little bit and got to be like. Yeah, and it, and it kind of, like, I agree with that. I, I probably, like, before this year's up, bro, I'm going to have to revisit that that honesty with myself and make mm -hmm. sure I stay on track. Because just think about accountability and how, how important it is to us, right? Accountability mm -hmm. as people is very important to us. Like, brand man, Sean, I promise you right now, bro, that, 
I'm going to give you $100. If I don't give you that $100, you're going to look at me like, this man is a liar. He didn't give me my $100. Now promise yourself that and let yourself down and see how accountable you are to yourself with that $100. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to save $100 this month not eating out. Yeah. Hey, my boy, you eating out all the time. You're not saving no money. But I promise you I'm going to give you $100. And now you're not my friend. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So hey, that, bro, that's that, that kind of thing, man. I never even heard it like that before. I, I, it's just something like that that I, I like I like to look at things like that. And then also perspective is everything, my brother. Like mm. like the what I, the way you look at things is your life, is your reality. Mm. And like and think of it like a telescope. Like when we're zoomed in so close to something, we can't see the surrounding things that are happening. Well, I so I literally in my in my situation, like being honest with myself was me zooming out of what I was focused on. Cause I'm focused on the same thing every day. But when you're focused on that, you get blinded by the things, you know, everything else around you. So you miss some opportunities. You miss some people that could have helped you. I mean, money, everything. So I zoomed out, bro. And I, I could see the full picture and it really put me in the right perspective too. I haven't figured it all out, but I'm working on it, brother. I'm working hard on it. Hey man, one step at a time. That's all you can do. Hey bro, you can't get nowhere without a step, bro. <laughs> that, that's real hey, so you mentioned something that it's actually it sounded a lot easier than it is for a lot of people when you say you, you know you zoomed out you, you laid your situation out to yourself and then you added value by not only just changing your mindset but also adding like real team members and certain team members like, how did you personally come across a booking manager because i know a lot of people who are like i have no idea where to start to get a booking manager right um well, first of all, like when I, a booking manager, I, I had to be able to be booked. You feel me? Like I had to be at, a, at that level of an artist to where I have songs, I have fans and people, you know, I, I'm ready to do shows. That's, that's the where I was at. And then instead of me finding somebody, bro, I groomed my best friend to be my booking manager, my mm -hmm. brother. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's not the best booking manager yet, but we're, what we do is, is, is we, you know, we, we like to keep things in house. The best way to save is to not spend. So when, you know, <laughs> when I got my brother in house and he's eager and he's willing to learn anything he needs to do to, for us to level up, yeah. um, that, that's kind of the, the mindset we, we took it as. And he, he literally is learning, you know, um, he, it's not hard to be a booking manager. It's hard to get, to get your artist booked. It's not hard to answer the call and set up a show and do that part. So the other part is he, he kind of is shadowing some people right now to okay. where he can get the real game from the game and not yeah. like, you know, just from me or something like that. So or um, not. he's kind of interning. Um, yeah. So my booking manager is an intern for another booking manager, which is just giving him the game and giving him the opportunities. And it's, so I had to create it. Hey, man, I love that, man. So you mobilize your own people and then you – you, you send them off to get an education so they can do you right. Bro, look at look at LeBron, bro. Like, he could have had... That's exactly what I was thinking right. about. That's exactly what I was he, thinking about. He could have anybody around him, but he empowered the people that he loved and grew up with. That's the that's the, that's the real thing when you can give reach back and not give somebody $10,000, but give them the opportunity to make tens of millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's that's um, the mindset that I love about it. My brother, I want my family to eat. You know what I'm saying? I want them to be a part of what I'm doing. And not me just being a, um, you know, if I make it, I don't want to just, you know, be the freeload, everybody freeload off of you. You want people to be working with you, working with, to be more successful. So Y'all want to ball out on vacation together, not get I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm trying to, like, I got the building. You got the <laughs> 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 you know? Yeah. Bet. 100%, man. So, hold on. Ooh. Let me move this out the way. But, yeah, man, like, so... I want to bring a little bit back to your music, man, because your music is like at the end of the day, your music is moving, bro. Like, Thank you. So congratulations for that, because that just, like even when you find the audience that you want, it's still like people still have to like it, you know? Exactly, and exactly, and and it go and, and it's like up and down for me or, or, or every artist, I would I would say, yeah. Unless you like, unless you find that season to where you just like everything you drop is is remarkable and untouchable. It's going to be songs you like and the people don't like. It's going to be songs that the people like and you don't like. Yeah. Like, I had, like, it's been so many times as an artist that I'm like, this is the song, bro. I love this song. Like, this is the one. And then you put it out and then nobody even takes $200 from you when you think you're giving, trying to give away free money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just because it's not what you like. It's what the people like. So the yeah. consumer is going to set you know, set you up for your success or your business or, you know, so the market, so the consumer set the market. Yeah. 
once you once you do that, man, I mean, you, you can start hacking the game at that point because you're just looking at it for what it is versus like I want everybody to just buy into me. And right. Just, like always. What, what, yeah, that's that's my goal. Once I become the 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 level of of a, an ambassador for brands is I want like the, the level that I want to be. I can sell toilet paper to you, man. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter what, what yeah. you're selling, you know, as long as you got that that brand and the loyalty to your brand. That's what I'm creating now, the, the brand loyalty. Because I want people to just support me for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love what you're doing and I love who you are. And that's and that's what, and that also, like, that, that like, doing doing interviews like this or, you know, going live with your fans, like, that's the stuff that really, like, make them love you. Not, like, they're going to love your music. But it's that it's that personality and that that one on one type that that feeling that you give them. That's what makes them want to come back. But I'm just learning that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to connect, man. And it, but I mean, what's powerful about what you're talking about right now, though, it's like I always feel like one of the things about being an artist, right? You have to being creative. Sometimes you have to not take certain feedback just to just to be creative because it's like a brave thing to do to put your own work out there. But at the same time, artists have to remember that you can't have an entitled way about things because at the end of the day especially from a business standpoint it's a marketplace you got to give people what they want and yep. then you got them rocking with you then you can take them new places like and, and create and, and give them this entire other world they weren't right. ready for but now that they're gonna pay attention because they trust you they're with your brand you know yep. that's already established but you try to do it at the beginning it's hard unless you got a lot of money straight up and most people like, why are you trying to rap if you got a lot of money? <laughs> most <laughs> most time people ain't trying to do that. If you already got a lot of money, you don't need to do nothing but chill. Hey, but what? That's you real. Get it, but uh, you know, uh, but it's very rare that you find artists like that. Like, it's very rare that you gonna find an artist that do music just to express themselves. Most of the time, people are trying to turn it into a business these days. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the next hustle. It's the next thing to do. Like me and you, we'll go. I go to the store right now. I'm in Atlanta right now. But you're going to bump into a rapper, <laughs> right? You know, somebody, you might, you know, they work at, the, they might be the clerk at the store and they got a mixtape out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just so flooded now to where your music is not needed. It has to be wanted mm. most of the time these days. Like, as an artist, like, it's it's thousands, probably millions of artists, like, that make music. Like, what what makes them want want me or cut yeah. through? You know, how can you cut through and be that, 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 that silver lining? So, yeah. 100 percent bro. I, bro. I'm like, you know what? Have you um because I've I've noticed that you got some, you know, you got some pretty decent name people that are following you. Like okay. so in terms of networking, like what have, what have you done? Like what, what were you always good at that? Have you changed your mentality? And how did you start to get in certain positions where certain people know about you? Um, that's a great, great question. Um me personally, I've always had a personality to where I can talk to a person and, you know, um, speak to them eye level and not speak down to them and not make them feel any way. So, like, I've, I've tried to take I had to take that and kind of exercise it toward people. And honestly, I look at networking like trying to talk to girls. You feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah. especially when it comes to like, I know, I mean, to D, like when it comes to DJs, like DJs yeah. want, are like you talking to a girl. Like they want to, they want to feel important. They want to feel like you for them. They want to feel like they're getting things before other people. Like it's, it's really like a, a like a, it's really like I guess you walking on eggshells sometimes when you doing that. But anyway, get back to get back to when networking and not ramble off. But I, I've been pretty good at talking to people, networking with people. Um, and now I just had to figure out how to get in the building to where I can get around those people to actually have a chance to talk to them, and. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it, you 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 made me think of this, but I've been studying this thing, and um, networking is so crucial to what we do. Like right now, me and you, without us networking, we would not be on this call, right? We're not. My my bro was networking. You you answered, we replied, so it got us here. For instance, for example, yeah. um, but I've been studying this thing called six degrees of separation. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah, yeah. But it is a network, like it kind of puts networking in a different in a different league. Because yeah. right now. Um, just for instance, like I could ask you one question, like how many handshakes away from Beyonce are you brand man, Sean? Mm. Like how many handshakes are you? You're less than six handshakes away from Beyonce. You, you feel me? Like that, that, that's, that's a crazy thing to me. Um, and like that kind of put it in perspective. So what I try to do is me being able to talk to people, my brother, Quan, he, my brother, he can talk to people as well. We kind of tag team. We duo it. 
Like we'll go talk to some people, we'll network with them, but it's really the key is to get in the building. Like tonight, I'm going to Two Chains listening party for his new album. Mm -hmm. You never know who I'm gonna talk to, who I'll bump into. It's just like finding the place and, and putting in the effort to be in the place and, and actually being around to get talk to actually have a chance to talk to somebody. Like that's that's half the battle. Being there, like they say, showing up is half the battle. So like hey, whether girl. whether it's whether it's like writing a person, like um, for instance, one big person, he doesn't follow me, but one big person I look up to is Biggs from Rock Nation. Yeah. He write me back all the time in the DM. Like that's something like to me, I'm like, bro, that's Biggs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like that's something that I like just me networking with him. Like I'll talk to him and sometimes I'll ask him questions. Sometimes I'll comment on what he's doing to show interest, like to make to let him know it's not just like a one way street. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm interested in what you're doing as well. I see he has a new artist out. I talk about the new art, you know, different things like that. I do research on who I'm trying to network with. Like, yeah. like me, I already knew you. Like with you, brother, you you got brand man Sean. Like, I, go on, you go through your page, bro, and you got nothing but like flame, like nothing but good, like straight flame bro i'm i'm looking at everything and everything is on point to where yeah. like it's, like basically if the world ended today and i wanted to be a rapper and there's nobody left you could go to your page and figure it out how to be an artist from your page real deal how to be a successful artist <laughs> hey because, bro, that's a awesome plug dog i appreciate nah, it like really bro like no it's it's a difference between some people that just do certain videos to talk about stuff that they like frustrated about or whatever they have a, they, like they're moody about it but yep. bro, you real deal dropping jewels and flames like every time, like, and that's rare to where the point where where you put out, I was able to use, I was able to implement it into my hustle, my grind, my my campaign, and it helped me with success, target audiences, grow like growing, being being um you know one on one with people that you're trying to network with, like, stuff is 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 like priceless, bro. It's jewels. Dope, man. Hey, I, I really appreciate that, man. It's funny because like even like a lot of the things that you're saying. Like when it comes to networking, mm -hmm. honestly, like I, t I tell people now, because yeah, like I spend a lot of time working on um, this Master Music Networking guy. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I dropped it like la early last year or whatever. Okay. And I found, I realized that networking is such a huge issue for a lot of artists. Like mm -hmm. some people don't even have, I can tell you got a little bit of gift uh, of gab. So that part flows a little bit easier for you. But and even right. but even the way you're approaching your DM situation, I, I literally tell people that they should do almost everything that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And I like I think <laughs> you got the that part figured out, bro. Like you, Thanks, bro. You, you, I can tell. It took, but it took the time though. It took the trial and the error and me like like learning. Like, bro, like if you're not a student of the game, you're gonna be left behind because it's forever changing. Like, think about when I first started, like my like in two thousand, like, okay middle school area like 2000s like when i was in the, like first started doing music i thought i was about to be selling cds like i didn't know i would be i would be a grown man trying to a grown artist like and go stream my music go listen to my stuff like stream it like i never like just the evolve like excuse me the the uh, the revolving door of music like how it keeps changing how it always is is a different uh market and every and then the people change as well and what the people like so it's just mm. It's so many variables to this to this music industry, and nobody wants to work with you unless they can make money with you or from you. Hey, bro, that's a damn near the truth. Eh? It's, it's sad when it's put down that way, but that's just the reality. And in, in, in most hey, cases, nobody wants to make money. Uh, nobody wants to do anything unless they can make it with you or from you. And that's everybody from the club promoter to the record label to the other artists that you work with like yeah. if they can't like think about it, if they don't see value in you what is me and you and me and you collaborating even worth if i can't book you as an artist to bring people to my club what is me even booking you worth so mm -hmm. it's it's that it's, it's really cutthroat and that's what makes it so cutthroat is it's people's opinions and then it's about that bread so yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, which which brings me to this though man because uh -huh. You're finding yourself in a new space right now, right? Like right. that acceleration is happening. You're on that uptick based on all that stuff that you had been doing before and then right. the small adjustments that you made. Like where is your mind now? Like how are you looking at things? Like what do you how are you gonna ex execute now that you have a new level of opportunities that you couldn't even execute last year? Right, maybe? right. Um like honestly, I've used the analogy when I'm talking to my friends, like right now, right now, where I'm at in my career. Cause I'm, I'm close to where I want to be. I'm not there yet, 
um, but I've been working for it. But right now, I feel like I'm really navigating through shark waters, like shark infested mm. waters right now, because <laughs> it's so crucial. My next move, I feel, because I'm mm. I'm not a young artist. You know what I'm saying? I've been rapping for ten years. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not seasoned. I'm marinated. I'm a marinated artist. You feel me? <laughs> I'm not a seasoned artist. I'm marinated. I've been you know I've been through some things to to grow, but um like. It's just shark water right now, bro. Like one wrong move, I feel can can end my career because one wrong contract was sent. Like if I get a, a contract tomorrow for three albums, and then they never put out my second album, and I only get to put out one more album my whole life, like it's just so crucial how much a contract will take me or or leave me. Yeah. So right now, I'm just you know I'm talking to my entertainment lawyer. Um, I'm I'm making sure we have a great relationship. She knows what I want to do. You know, she knows what I've been through. She actually was part of my first. I, I got a record deal when I graduated high school, bro. We can talk about that as well. Because, oh, yeah, let me hear about that. I ain't know that. Um, oh, man, so that's how I met Rob. Um, I've never told this story publicly ever, but um, so in 2010, my goal, I, I played high school football, and where I'm from, high school football is everything, but I chose yeah. music over football. I yeah, could have went and played bro. college sports, right? So, but I'm like, man, I love music. So I graduated and I got a signing bonus, man. They gave me a ten thousand dollars signing bonus, bro. And I'm and I'm 18 years old and I ain't never had more than two hundred dollars to my name, bro. Yeah. So I I'm on. I'm like, what? Oh my God, they selling dreams, bro. And I'm buying every dream they sell. <laughs> so listen, man. So um, so basically, um, the first person I met in the music industry was Thomas McClary. Um, that's the biggest person I met first. And I don't know if you know, do you know who that is? I don't know who that is. I was about to ask you. All right. So Thomas McClary, it's old school stuff. Like, um, so Thomas McClary is with the Commodores. He wrote, he wrote the song and performed the song. She's a brick. Oh, man. Okay. Right back yeah. in the day. All right. He a legend, man. <laughs> Already a legend. But I found out that he was, him and the label got into it. He was doing dirty stuff with the label. My first experience. Mm -hmm. Then, um, not, not only this, but as an artist on the label, um, I'm writing for other artists, right? There's another artist on the label. I'm not. I'm not gonna get into details. You, you guys wouldn't know who he was. So he's an older artist and he's a dancer, but he's an old school. But he can't really rap. So I'm writing music for him. Um, I'm actually open, like perform. I'm his hype man at shows. Like, bro, let me tell you this funny, this funny story. And the concept of the record label was no cursing, right? Okay. I graduated high school and the concept of the label was no cursing. So that's how they got. They got that's how they got such a good investment mm. for the for the for the label because people were like oh this is positive hip hop and um and and they were buying into it because it was supposed to be um I originally got involved with the company because it was supposed to be the rap American Idol right it was the that was back when American Idol was big and now they wanted to do a, a TV show for rappers like American Idol so we shot a pilot and then I got signed to the record label from the pilot of the TV show so <laughs> long story short. <laughs> Right? Yo, bro. This shit. I've been through it. I've been through it, bro. That's but that's why I'm saying I had to go through it to get to here, bro. So um so Rob, you the um my brother Rob, who you who you were speaking with, yeah. he was um he graduated from Florida State. He's fresh out of college. Yeah. And the record label sold him a dream and said, Come down here, be an AR for this record label. You know, we got all this money, we're starting up a new label, we got half a million dollars, everything's moving, come down. So he comes down nothing bro nothing's happening they go they go try to sell the other artists to the record label and um they say now at this point just to give you like the, the 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 setting is there's no other white rappers besides eminem and maybe like asher roth like i don't really bubba sparks you feel me <laughs> yeah like, like right now you can there's a handful of them you feel me there's a there's quite a bit of white rappers so at this time i had a couple songs out and they go and i'm the second option i'm like second string you feel me? Because I'm the young guy, fresh out of high school. So they go try to sell this guy. And this guy back then was about 40. I don't know what they're thinking. They invested in him, though. 40, he's a he's like a hip-hop break dancer, and he's got one gold tooth right there. So <laughs> wow. listen, listen, so with that being said, they try to sell him, and the record labels were like, no. And um, the people who brought us to the record labels, was another industry big wig, and his name was Mari Starr. I don't know if you know Mari Starr. Mm -hmm. So you'll know uh, Mari Starr was doing consulting for the label. And Mari Starr is the boy band guru. He created New Edition, um, New Kids on the Block, okay. um, Backstreet Boys, like the boy band, the whatever. You know, he was in the, uh, the New Edition movie as well. So okay. 
he he was part of the label consulting and once the the other artist was not basically um sold they didn't set they, they turned him down i was like oh we got this white artist as well check him out and this is back in the day where and so i had two labels back in the day out of fresh out of high school warner brothers and um and mercury and island def jam were all like interested in me they were yeah. like oh this white kid he can rap we like his music florida okay cool so with that being said they come back and then i'm already on a this is how crazy contracts are this is how i learned when i signed the recording contract man i was a i was a fool i didn't even have an attorney present i just signed the recording contract and it was a literally a 360 deal and it was like a six album 360 deal bro it was like wild bro i would still be in that record deal right now if i didn't find an, an entertainment lawyer to get me out and that label of course went under and you know they're not a, they're not even around no more yeah but basically they were trying to get me so what the, this is where it comes down to the point where i had to learn quickly i was signed to the record label as an artist now the ceo the ceo of the record label came to me individually and tried to manage me now a lot of people like they might look at that like what's wrong yeah. with that he's the yeah. he's you know he's trying to listen first of all it's conflict of interest conflict of interest okay first yeah. of all conflict of interest and if anybody's listening they don't know what that is a ceo is supposed to worry about his company if i'm the ceo of my company i don't care about anything else but my company okay that's that's your main priority that's your job actually to worry mm -hmm. about your company but as as my manager you got to worry about the artist first Mm. The manager, you know, is is not for you know the not the CEO. So that's the first conflict. And it's just like I know if you're doing a, a negotiation, it's gonna be for your label and not for me. One hundred percent, man. I mean, okay. even, you know, when it comes to people um, like entertainment lawyers and things like that, like really, like your lawyer should necessarily even be your manager's lawyer. Like this, right. there's a whole, a whole bunch of those overlays you gotta watch. So, so I, many, and and who's important. paying? Like if if you let like say from for instance. I was using the the when I was signed to the record label. I was using the record label's attorney. I'm not paying that. Uh, I'm not paying that uh, that lawyer. I don't got that retainer fee. Her loyalty is not to me. You feel me? So she might think I'm cool, a great artist, but at the end of the day, who's cutting your paycheck? That's who you're gonna listen to. So with that being said, I didn't sign the contract. And when I didn't sign the individual management contract, because not only is it conflict of interest. But then it's like double dipping because you're getting a salary from the record label and then you get 15% as my manager from everything I make. So think about that. I'm, I'm like, okay. And then it's a slap in the face to my brother because Rob is my acting manager. He's doing everything. He's Me and him were sleeping at his sister's house or our sister's house in a one bedroom apartment on the floor. Like y'all telling us you're about to put us up in the condos, like selling us dreams. And we drive like literally from we're like 45 minutes a day down to that down to this office and we're in the office every day and they just selling this dream so like soon as i didn't sign that bro they flipped the script on me bro like i knew i should have never called this kid family oh no. like it flipped the script like I, I so i went to the studio the next hold, hold, hold on real quick don't let people throw that family word around, oh my goodness man. family and that artist. don't mix don't yeah. don't let somebody like i had the wool put over my eyes with the family line like mm -hmm. oh i've done been to your house i didn't I hung out with your kids. We we're cool, like family ties. And then I didn't sign one contract, and it's out the door. You feel what I'm saying? Like, cause oh, your family, you're supposed to sign. But I would have made him a very rich man. You know what I'm saying? It might. That's why my my grind has been a slow grind because I've like had to navigate through certain things like that to where that stuff almost scarred me. You know what I'm saying? I was 18 years old when all this happened, so it scarred me. And like, I had to go through it like and learn bro like because if i wouldn't have learned from it i would have just signed the next contract because i've had three or four like other like produce uh, either a producer wants me to sign somebody wanted me to start a record label with them like yeah. just so many other like quote unquote opportunities but at the same time like i had to like really evaluate if it's good or bad for me because if i would have you know just went just signed anything i could you know, I might not even be a rapper right now. You feel me? I would have, I would have been messed up, but working a nine to five, like lost my dream. Hey, so I feel you. <laughs> yeah, bro. So, but you know, after that, the record label, I got it. Even the entertainment lawyer who got me out of that contract, he tried to sign me. <laughs> like it's just crazy how how cut this industry is. But like, 
And Rob has been like, it's just a couple people that you're going to find that are for the long haul, like are going to be in your corner, no matter what, like, whether it's there, like Rob, like I've lost 30 to $50,000. I know Rob has lost that just like in promoting stuff. And like over the years, like, yeah, like the money, the, the money pit, you know, music is a money pit, bro. The weather, whether either way you look at it. That's, hey man, that, that story is wild, man. But it, <laughs> I know but it. now, but now I'm in a position story. where I can. I'm negotiating right now with like. So my 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 goal, brother, between me and you, is to be at the Rock Nation brunch next year. Okay, and between me and you, Brand Man Sean, I'm on I'm on track to reach my goal, brother. And um, I'm working hard for it. Hey, bro, we gotta do an update. Let's make that shit happen. Yeah, we, yeah. You do that, man. I gotta. He got to put that all on a DM, man. We gonna we gonna yeah. share the world. <laughs> so just just to show you how far, how many handshakes away from Beyonce you are, I've been working with um with Rock Nation, and um I've been working with um Rail Carter. Rail Carter is an A and R from Rock Nation, and he has a, a a tour, and it's called the Rail Carter Culture Tour. And um basically, I got a part of that, and it was a I I did probably three or four dates, and then we did a compilation album, and then from the compilation album, I wrote on it. I had the bet like I had I had a song on it, and now. I'm just working with him now and talking to him now. So it's like it's a, we're in a great position. So it's just negotiating right now with with, with that. So hey man. Hey, it's, I'm rooting you know, for you on that shit. <laughs> yeah, thank you, bro. Like that's that's just on the low right there between me and you. Hey, on the low, man. You, this, yeah. <laughs> on the low on my channel. Yeah, on your channel, bro. Between <laughs> me and you. Man. I ain't told nobody that. You the first outlet. I ain't posted nothing on Instagram, no nothing. Yeah. Just because um we're negotiating and I want it to be the right um, situation. You know, I feel like if I, I feel like I could be successful with that, with that, with those around, with those people around me. So, hey, man. But that's not, the, that's not the all time. Like if it's the right deal, I, let's be partners. But if it's not, you know, you still got to get it independently. Like you, like you should. It's important, man. Like don't you let know? those, those right. kind of goals, it's like, yeah, it'll be beneficial. But if you get there and then you realize it's not what, you, what makes sense, you got to be oh, man. Say, Bro, I was, you know I was what I thought it was. Bro, and just, just like like you're saying, like you think you think it's something and it's really not. Like, bro, I was reading a contract I got. Uh, I'm not going to say what record label it came from. But, bro, they said in the contract that, like, they have the, like, the opportunity to own all of your um, – what the the masters you previously own previously recorded masters like Ooh. they want to they want to know if we can get that in writing um if both parties agree in writing that the the, re the new record label would take over masters i'm like what i'm like the and and honestly like if i wasn't a a, a marinated artist a seasoned artist boy that that the, everything else looks very appealing on on the project right you know or, excuse me on the on the on the contract but it's just it's a just it's so much to consider, bro. And like, you don't want to, everybody's trying to make it. And it's just like, if I don't do this, do I, will I, will I make it? Or it's just that if, so you don't, you know, you want to make sure it's right though, bro. So yeah, I was okay. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta believe that you're going to make it regardless. Right. That's kind of, it's one of those parts of, you know, like whether it's delusional or not at some point, it feels that it might feel that way at times, but. Bro, you know. 2018 was the worst year of my life. I'm telling you, bro, I lost everything committing to music, bro. I wow. everything from my car, my apartment, my uh my girlfriend. Um, like literally like I was down to like what can I lose next, bro? Like I don't have like I don't have no money. Like I was like 2018, I could say was the worst year of my life. And and you know what it was? Uh -huh. when I quit my job and I started doing music full time. And October of two of 2017. I quit my job and then for the whole two, so that whole, since October, 2017 until like, then I was, I was just going through it, bro. Like one thing after another, I put out, I, I spent all my money on the wet tape to get it recorded and put out. And then yeah. I put it out and I don't got no money to promote it. And I'm like, how am I going to like, it's just so, it was terrible, bro. And it just had to, yeah. I had to like re like that, that when I said that, look in the mirror and find my truth, like be honest with myself, like what I'm doing, what I'm not doing and what I want to do. Like, jeez. But hey, man, I, I'm I'm here now, bro. So I mean, I'm I'm able to like use what I've been through to hopefully help somebody else to yes. know that hey, bro, like I'm a human, you're a human, and we went through this stuff. To I mean, it's possible, you know. That's the thing, though. It's crazy how we need to see other people do it to believe in ourselves to do it. Yeah. But, 
it, but, it, hey, it to go that way a lot of times for people. It, almost mm -hmm. like, bro, if you never seen nobody dunk, you think you could dunk? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about that. If nobody ever dunked, like, I don't know. I it's just it's people hard, man. Like, yeah. To, like, it, it takes a lot of courage to just believe in yourself and to do something that you ain't never seen nobody do. Right. You know? Right. It just it just is it is that way, you know. In um, any field though, in any field, doing what you're doing, bro, it take a lot of courage and a lot of consistency. Like that's my probably my biggest flaw for myself yeah. is being inconsistent sometimes. Like yeah. I I'll I'll have a great like I'll get great feedback and it's not that's not the problem. The problem is me being you know being re resilient and going at it every time and not not getting over overthinking myself and underdoing. Mm. That yeah. don't happen so much to us, bro. Hey man, I, I, look, I done been there just just creating videos sometimes, man. I can create right. videos where I'll record it. Well, first of all, it'll take me, I'm like, all right, I'm about to record it. And the next 10 minutes after I set up, five hours later, I'm sitting there thinking about like and trying to restructure stuff and how should I go and does this matter and all that kind of stuff. So, right. <laughs> you know, you're you hard on yourself, man. You're yeah. hard on yourself, man. But You'll hate it after I uh, recorded it. And then, matter of fact, I got one video, man. That jumped. Last week, you know, my video editor did it. <laughs> you okay. see this. <laughs> and I was like, man, I ain't like how that felt. I really didn't like that video, but I'm give it. I'm gonna give it to him. And you he know, did great. He, he might look. No, he might. It's not even out yet. But it was like, I said, if he he he's gonna edit it, but I'm probably not gonna release uh, release it. But I was like, no, I'm just I'm gonna let him edit it. But I'm not I'm not just just not gonna say nothing. I didn't like how I went. But this man never really says much about my videos. Right. This video, out of all videos, he said, yo, this video is dope, man. And this video is perfect. I'm, a, I'm like, ah. Oh. <sighs> See? My, my boy, you out of your comfort zone and you reach it. That, that, that's what it is. You know what I mean? So it's like, when you had those experiences, so it's like, I'm just overthinking it. We all have, like, those moments. And, right. and, and a lot of my stuff, honestly, is, like, me pushing past, like, just that same overthinking like something I mean, when i when i started i told myself i was gonna do two videos a week for a year okay like once i committed to it first i was just doing it for fun but then i said no i'm gonna take it seriously i said two for a year because for one like if i said i'm gonna do a certain number that means like all right look time is up you've been wanting to like you don't like how it is but you got to put something out at this point right? right and i committed to a whole year so i was like i'm not comfortable and i don't i don't want to be out look just put it out, and and since I did, and I just stuck to that number at that time, I was like, it's not about whether I um, it's not a, it's not about whether I'm successful. You know, I wanted to maybe have a thousand subscribers at the end of the year just to have a goal, but it wasn't about really hitting that goal. It's just about like if you execute, you do it. If people don't like it, cool, just do something else. If people see value in it, keep doing it. You know, and and mm -hmm. learn from that lesson. Sometimes we guys got to create like a structure for ourselves to get out our own, own head. Like, that's what I try to promote. Like, what, what's your, what are your issues and how do you create a structure to, <laughs> to act as insurance for your own issues? Come on, come on. That's, that's, that's some quality work right there, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Like, uh, like real quick, because like, you, you get a lot, man. And I just want to add a little bit more context because you said you, you quit your job, right? And a yeah. lot of stuff went, went heavy. Now you're at a point where you're pretty comfortable, like, yo, man, like, because of the album, I'm mean, going the way you, uh, your project right. is moving and things like that, it feels good. But what was, first of all, what was your mentality when you quit? Was it just like, I don't, like, I have a certain amount of money and I think this is enough and I'm going to be able to oh, no. do it? Or you just, like, got mad at work one day? Like, how, how did that go for you? Um, it went like this. Um there was moving in my department. I'll see, I'll tell you my job. I was an audio, I'm an audio video technician. Uh, I worked for the Tampa Bay Rays, um, the baseball team. Right. And I was a house sound guy. I did all the audio video broadcast engineering, that kind of stuff. So I did that. And I had a day where they kind of moved people around in my department and then they changed my boss and I didn't get the position. And from yeah. there I left. Right. Yeah. But the last thing I remember was my the, the VP of my department saying good luck with your music? Mm. Like he knew already, yeah, what was going down. So with that being said, like my mentality, I didn't have a lot of money, but what they did is they gave me severance. Um, 
when I left. So they paid me for a couple more months. And I, I went to Atlanta, bro. And I started recording. That's the first thing I did. And I recorded, um, like, I, I just caught a one-way flight, bro. I said, forget it. You know, I had my uh, my sis and stuff up here. And I just started locking in with every producer I could find, working. And the wet tape was not even in the works. Um, but I recorded it. Maybe when you get a chance to check out the page, I, I did a song called Wish You Well. Yeah, I'm And sure. I got to shoot a video for it. And I worked with Bolo. Um, he's a platinum producer from, he's from Florida, but he lives in Atlanta. Um, he did the he did some old stuff for T Pain, and then the most recent thing, biggest song he did was uh I think this, the Whip and Nene by Salento. Okay. That, watch me whip. What that he did that song, but I got with him and just started working and like bro, it was literally like that whole year from when I quit my job to like I went to Atlanta, I worked, then I came back. I mean, my girl didn't work out. Then my car, you know, I'm not working. I'm just an artist. I ain't got no money. My wow. my, my car payment falling behind. Shit got repoed. I say that shit out loud. I ain't never said that shit out loud. Shit got repoed. I'm no now. I got no car, no job, no girl, bitch. I'm just. I'm out. I mean, I'm out of luck, really. Like, yeah. It is, and then finally, like, I, I, I just got my like my mind together. I'm like, this is the project. I want to do a project called Wet Tape for the ladies. It was supposed to come out in February, right, of 2018. I missed the deadline. Okay. I didn't get it out until August 31st. So it's been out since August 31st of 2018. Um, so I did. So it's like six months now, six, seven months. So with that, oh, it's March. Yeah. So it just was like, it was just like, what am I going to do now? I know, I know what I'm capable of doing. How can I make it happen? Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like I'm on an island and I need to build a bridge to get over to my dreams. Like, you know what I'm saying? To get back over to the mainland. Um, that's a, an analogy I could I could use it as like how can I build this bridge to get where I want to go um, and I'm not all the way across the bridge yet but I can at least see light at the end of the tunnel yeah <laughs> you, <laughs> you know see, so see land again right right I'm trying yeah. I'm, I'm I'm still I'm but honestly like you said it, it, in in um, being an artist full time now um, the successes are great but as an artist how long will my successes last before it's not it's not trendy anymore, you know? Yeah, like my project is doing great. Like I'm averaging, I'm averaging streams, like hundreds of thousands of streams a month now, you know, with my mm -hmm. project. But what happens when people don't like want to listen to it every day? Like music, like what is the expiration date of the project? Not the, not like it, it will expire, but it's not going to be a, a priority or it's not going to be on the top of people's mind anymore. Like, yeah. what am I going to do now? You know, because I'm living off of music. So I got to, and that, so that's another pressure coming out. Like it's, it's creeping through the back door. You feel me? Like I can, I, it's, I can feel it on my, on, my, on the back of my neck. Like, well, you need to get some more work going on and get some more stuff going. So, cause, cause it's like, it's the same thing with you. Like if you ain't making more videos, more content, then it's, it's not, you know, it's not continuing to grow. Yeah. 1,000. So that, it's on, it's on the back of my neck. It's breathing on the back of my neck. That next hit record, bro. Whatever. I'm trying to make something happen. <laughs> yeah, bro. You got to cap off. You got to cap off the momentum, man. You got to keep putting in there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Last question, bro. How many followers on Facebook, Instagram? What does your social presence look like when you quit your job in what late 2017? Okay. Um, I had thirty thousand followers. 30,000 followers on Facebook, on Insta, oh, excuse me, on, oh, hold on, Thir no, I had 35 to 40,000 40, followers on Instagram. Okay. And me, of course, of me going viral, and then me having, me networking and finding followers to repost my stuff. Like, I got friends in the NFL, I got friends who play baseball, I got different people who gave me, like, over time, like, they just repost my stuff, like, randomly, I, like, some people I asked, some people I didn't, but like that. And then just kept like literally domino effect. Like one person mm -hmm. see it, next person see it, and then just doing challenges. Like I, it, I know, I know it's it's like it, it's not like likely for everybody to be able to to gain. But this is just me. Like I'm saying, me finding what worked for me. Like I found that me doing freestyle, then me being white. I'm not even. Let's not lie about that. Let's not lie about me being white and then being a being a rapper and like me being able to like rap and then look like this and sound like this and then like I try to use that to my advantage to where I, I'm I'm more marketable. Like I'm like if you scrolling down the timeline, 
why do you want to stop on my video? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, so me just looking like how I am and sounding how I am, I feel like that helped me, honestly. Bro, I, hey, man, like the level of like introspection and like for real self-awareness, because a lot of people don't even acknowledge that. Like in right. terms of like just the little things they got going on. You didn't just say, oh, because I'm a white rapper, but you said the way you sound too. Like all, right. these, little, all these little things, because once you're aware of it, then like you can flip it, like right. it's not about can, whether people. Once I'm aware, I can use it. If I'm not, yeah. if I'm not aware of it, there's no way I can put it in my put it in my toolbox. I exactly. need it, I need it in my toolbox, bro. Exactly. And what I try to tell people is like it's not about what pe whether people should care or not about certain things you got going on. It's the fact that people do care about certain things mm. that are going on, and and it, or things are weird to them. So once you're aware of how other people are gonna look at things in the first place then you can use that to your advantage, bro. Like, just right. use what you have, and that's all you did. So, hey, man. Yeah. And just try to be, like, the next thing, last thing I would say, I got, a, I got one question for you, but the last thing I would say about oh, that man. is, like, um, like, not only do you find what works for you, but it's only going to work if you're being authentic. Like, I don't, I don't try to rap about stuff I don't do. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, nobody going to fact check me. Nobody got to fact check me. You feel <laughs> me? Like, what I'm talking about is what I'm talking about is because it's, it's my like of course music is the best the big a uh, rap music is the biggest form of storytelling exaggeration um you know like making yourself look like look great of course but at the same time like be authentic to your brand uh, the authenticity is so important because like what i stand for is me whether you see me with my grandma or whether you see me with these ladies or whether you see me in a club you see me in the studio like i'm still trying to be the same brand and be the same me i don't like i don't like you know, I'm not no, don't be a chameleon. Like, don't try to blend into everything you go. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in the, I'm in the rap. Like, I'm in Atlanta with some, with some, uh, you know, artists like 21 Savage and, and Amigos. I'm not trying to sound like 21 Savage and Amigos because I'm around that. You feel what I'm saying? Don't try to blend into the brand. Be the brand. But. I love it, bro. Straight For sure. But my question for you, my brother, is, um, of course, bro, I'm a fan of yours, like your page and the way you move and how, how, how how intelligent you are and how much you've learned in a short amount of time and how much you will learn like that's going to be so dope to where you get to because right now your base of knowledge is like 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 second to none like not so many people have that base of knowledge that you have so my next my question is um with you growing what what is your of course you know if, like you want to do different things but what is your overall goal with what you're doing oh, man my overall goal is honestly to create an education platform that is like the foundational knowledge base, kind of like how you actually said, it's funny that you said that I never thought about it that way, but if everything like failed, you know, nothing else was left, like did, uh, people could start their career off of just the information on this channel. Right. right. So that's number one. Right. I, at first last year, one of the, one of the reasons I had a lot of stuff going on last year, well, last year was probably like actually one of the craziest and like, uh, worst years of my life too. Um, but, and it was a two month period when I stopped the channel. It's a lot of things going on, but one of the things that, that I contributed to that in terms of the channel was I had felt like I already did that in terms of like the foundation was there. Then I got to a point where I was like, you know what, there are some things I could add, namely adding more people all right, unfortunately, that video cut short. We had some technical difficulties, but hopefully at some point in the future, me and Legit will be able to catch up again and have another conversation. But I would love to know what you guys think. You can put that in the comment section below. Put them thoughts down there. We can engage. And other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.